All right, hey YouTube, uh, it's Max. Uh, so before I get started on this one, I kind of wanted to talk about uh, the video that I was recording yesterday, which was the choices and consequences one. And I feel like I was just stumbling the entire time in that one. And I feel like I'm gonna stumble a lot in this one too. And um, really, I guess, I'm still trying to figure out this whole, like how I should record these videos. So like when I do those ones in the car, um, I'm obviously like not running a script and then for like these ones where I sit in front of the camera on my computer I'm trying to write like more of a script uh, because I don't want to get off track but the thing is um, I feel like you know I don't really revise these scripts very well um, I don't even really know what I'm talking about half the time and so I feel like sometimes I'm just kind of like reading but I don't even like process what I'm reading from the script uh like right now I'm going off script but like maybe later in this video you'll be seeing me going whatever on script and I'll just kind of like be zoning out reading something and have no real context of what I'm even talking about anyway uh, I just wanted to bring that up uh just in case that came up uh and it was apparent um yeah that's really you know just a little disclaimer um so just to get a bit meta, I'm going into the intro part that I was writing down. And in this intro part, I was talking about basically being old. Um, and like, I'm 27 years old right now, but I still feel like I'm 22 sometimes. Like the past five years of my life are just all kind of blurred together. Uh, I don't know if this is like a COVID kind of consequence, but like, I literally like, I almost like feel like I'm like losing track of like my age if that makes sense like i don't know like every birthday just feels kind of like irrelevant now um but like i still notice like things like my bot like i feel like this is like the first year this past year that i've like really noticed like my body getting like older so like i've definitely like gained weight um compared to like what i was like you know five years ago or whatever and like i definitely feel like i just get like tired all the time uh, like I'm tired at night, like at like 10 p.m. I just want to go home if I'm like out. Like I don't know, it is it's just it feels like I'm definitely like noticing things. Like also, like um, I, I feel like I just want like more stability in my life. Like in my job, I just care about like you know work life balance. Uh, it's I care about like going shopping like I don't care about going shopping that much but when I do go shopping I'm like interested in like storage containers for my kitchen um you know that's just like where my mind's at like I'm I'd say in my stage of life I'm interested in you know like getting a house maybe like in a year or so and uh you know just like starting a family and you know focusing on people that are like in my life uh around me uh, and just like this own my own little sliver of the world and I feel like I'm just like increasingly getting more and more ignorant about the world like uh, la like today I just found out that Facebook changed its name to meta and it did that like um, probably like eight or nine months ago and like I just feel like I'm like living under a rock sometimes like especially like during the pandemic or like uh, when I was working from home all the time and, uh, you know, so there would be, like, many days where I just, like, wouldn't really leave the house. So, like, it's just, like, you know, it's a weird time to be alive, I guess. And um, I guess, like, you know, I still consider myself young at 27. But I'm seeing people, like, now playing, like, professional sports that are 10 years younger than me. And, like, I guess 27... Uh, and like 30 is like right around the corner and that's usually like the uh, the midlife uh, in like professional sports like I think people may retire around like 40 in most sports um, so yeah it's just like kind of weird like thinking about like I'm at this stage in my life and um, yeah so I, I guess this is just kind of like an intro talking about how old I feel uh, and this video is kind of about like my thoughts on the internet and um, I was watching this video. I'll I'll see if I can link it in the description because it was a really well made YouTube video. Um, but uh, it was pretty much just about like VR chat. And VR chat uh, is this thing that like uh, 
my history with it, I have never owned VR Chat. Um, I've heard it, you know, come up as like uh, s similar to like my experience with like cryptocurrency and like NFTs. Like I, I don't really like participate in it, but I know it exists, and I've heard like you know, uh, I guess like there's like some like general pros and cons. Like you kind of like know the, um, you know, the there's like in VR Chat, I guess. There's this idea of it's like an escapism tool, sort of like, uh, you know, a chat message, but like you just kind of create an avatar and can walk around while you chat with people. And, uh, you know, maybe there's like it kind of like caters to people uh, who are interested in like role play like me. Uh, and it's just like this creative space of self-discovery. And um, yeah, I guess like that that's like kind of like my thought, my initial thoughts on it. It's like, oh, it's something I would like want to try eventually. Um, but I just, you know, don't really see myself spending money on a VR machine or uh, whatever. And um, my two experiences with the VR, uh, it's with friends who have owned one. And, you know, they've kind of shown it to me as like a gimmick, you know, or hanging out. And it's like, oh, this is cool. But then, like, we never really bring it back up again. It's kind of just like that thing that you use once and then it kind of collects dust. And so I've never really seen myself or any reason to get one. But when I was watching this video, uh, it was kind of like the dark side of um, VR chat. And I feel like, you know, if someone ever thinks about like the dark side of VR chat or like brings it up, immediately you can kind of predict what the video is about. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, things that totally make sense. Um, I won't get into too much of the details because I'm sure you can kind of, um, you know, imagine the dark side. But I thought it was kind of cool how they were um, setting it up and f formatting it like the seven deadly sins and um, kind of going through each sin as like something that you can find on VR chat. And I feel like that's pretty um, accurate when you like look at the internet as a whole, um, especially like when you find out about like the dark web for the first time and you're just like, wow, that's like ridiculous. And I mean, it's something that you kind of think about for like that day and then the next day you kind of like forget it exists until it's brought up a couple of weeks later and stuff like that and um i guess like so i wanted to like kind of not really like i guess just kind of like word vomit my ideas about it um you know i, I don't really form a whole lot of like complete thoughts in these videos it's more just like my surface level thoughts being recorded um i feel like it's just easier to make that way and um I don't know, I guess you can kind of, like, learn about some things that I think about, but it's not really, like, organized or formulated in, like, a cohesive thought. So, um, yeah, like, I guess w what I'm thinking uh, right now is that, like, VR chat, I kind of see it as, like, a potential for, like, the new future. Um, like, right now, obviously, it's, like, still in, like, early development. But, like, just thinking about, like, 10 years from now in the future, like, is this going to be something that, like, my kids are going to, um, you know, grow up with? Um, you know, like, thinking about the evolution of, like, our technology where there was, like, um, you know, maybe in, like, the 80s and 90s, owning a computer was, like, kind of rare. Uh, but nowadays it's, like, very, like, common. So, like, computer games were, like, very, like, 8-bit. I remember playing like the, you know, PlayStation 1 and the uh, Nintendo 64 as a kid. And now you got like completely different games and uh, online capabilities that just weren't really a thing back in those days. Um, so just like thinking about where and like just how technology is constantly evolving, like where we'll be. Because um, I, I don't know if I'll have like kids for like probably 10 years like when they start getting to the age where they'll be like like you know having kids and then having kids that are actually like getting involved in this stuff and it seems like kids are getting like involved in the internet uh earlier and earlier like i know like elementary school kids that are like you know playing like online video games and uh you know have access to these things and just from like the video and just like looking at some of the like parental restrictions on some of these games that like are just easily bypassable like free to play download things that people can just have access to with like very 
little restrictions or like ways where like kids can just kind of like teach each other how to bypass the restrictions in ways that like adults are like so focused on their lives that they probably won't be keeping up with it. I don't know. I'm just thinking like ahead about these things, uh, I guess. And it's uh, pretty like scary to think about. Um, But yeah, like, I don't know. It's uh, just, yeah. Um, I'm also just like thinking about like, I guess what will be like from a business perspective um like so what i'm thinking about is like you know how like a while back like we didn't even use like the internet in a lot of our jobs and then now we're using internet in our jobs like for example like before like the email before email existed like how were people doing jobs they were doing them somehow then you uh introduce the email and it kind of makes the jobs more efficient then you start introducing all this other software that companies are implementing. And, um, you know, before you know it, all the companies are using like software to run their businesses and everything's just getting way more efficient. Um, and then like, I guess like a recent example, just like um, we would all go into work. Uh, it was kind of weird thinking about like working from home as like a full-time thing. It was kind of like a special privilege. And now like, you know, um covid hits and many companies are switching to like an online or a remote from remote working kind of uh system as like a main means of conducting business and like i'm thinking about like even how i've seen this kind of uh being implemented maybe not this specifically but just kind of like technology being implemented in like um like if you ever go to like a wawa or mcdonald's and you see like you don't always go to like the uh, the cashier anymore to like order food you can go to like a touch screen kind of thing and order food that way or like apps like uh, doordash or uber eats how like you can just kind of like put in like your order and then like go pick it up or like someone driving it to you and if they're driving it to you you know i've there's like uh self-driving car apps that are becoming uh, or not apps, but self-driving car technology that's becoming more of, like, a, um, I guess, a thing that, like, people are, like, trying to improve and whatnot. Um, I don't know. It just feels like I'm getting old and, like, thinking about this and just, like, watching things evolve around me. And it's kind of, like, I'm kind of aware of it, but I'm not really, like, mindful of it. I don't know if that makes sense. But, um... Yeah, uh, going back to this, like, VR chat video, like, uh, it was just kind of, like, interesting learning about all the dark sides to it. And, um, like, I was kind of saying um, that, like, like I, I don't really want to bring up the exact topics because it feels kind of, like, weird talking about them. But um, just, like, things that, like, you are aware of but you ignore them. And, um, I don't know, I guess it's just, like, the internet, or the world revolves around the internet these days, like, it's our entertainment, like, YouTube, or, like, you know, Netflix, or, you know, it's our news, like, all the different news channels that, like, require the internet, like, I I don't own, like, cable anymore, that was a thing, but now it's, like, all, like, internet-based, uh, communication, so, like, you know, like, we still use texting from time to time, but, like, there's so many, like, communication apps that we use, uh, like, uh, Discord or, you know, Facebook Messenger or something like that, that we use instead of just, like, texting that require the internet. Uh, we're ordering things from, like, Amazon or uh, just online. It's getting shipped to our house. Uh, there's so much education, like, whether you're, like, applying for college or, you know, you're looking up educational content, it all requires the internet. Same with your careers, like I was saying earlier with email, or um, just, like, you know, if you're applying to, like, go to work or something, like, you definitely are applying to a place to work, like, you need to, like, submit an application that requires the internet. Like, everything requires the internet, so it just feels like we need to, like, we can't just, like, quit cold turkey, you know? So we need to, like, practice safe use, but we, it's hard to, like, constantly think about safe use every single day. Um, so I think it's just good to be, like, mindful about it every now and then. And, like, I guess thinking about, like, uh, you know, with technology con- 
constantly getting better and better, there's going to be like legal uh, kind of things, ramifications to it. Like, I feel like it takes a lot longer for laws to be implemented and like enforced uh, than it does to make um, like innovations to technology. And so this kind of like creates these kinds of areas where um, the, uh, you know, technology can be used for like malicious intent or even like accidental malicious intent like because you have to like i mean like obviously there's like some things that are like unjustifiable and stuff but like if you're talking about like uh communicating these laws and stuff to like especially like minors or something that like like if they're not being like told at an early age or like you know informed of the dangers by adults who may not even be aware of the dangers themselves like, there's just all this uh, room for disaster, if that makes sense. So, like, if a parent is trying to teach their kid about, uh, like, safe use, but they're not, like, even aware of, like, VR chat or things like that, like, it's hard for the parent to stay up to date and then stay up to date to a point where they can teach their kids about the dangers um, because these things are just always in evolving, I guess. And, um, you know, it's weird because, like, I grew up on computers. Unfortunately, I didn't come across anything, like, too dangerous or harmful. Um, I was pretty anonymous on the internet up until about now. And, yeah, just thinking about, like, kids growing up in this, like, sort of online environment can be kind of scary. Um, and uh, I don't know. I think, like, the best way to approach it is just to, like, try to teach them critical thinking skills and... Um, you know, trying to maintain a positive relationship with kids, because, like, um, I think that, you know, if you can teach, like, the kids to, like, you know, uh, you know, have that kind of, like, gut reaction, like, this could be wrong, and uh, being, like, you know, you can always ask questions, and if they feel like they can ask questions without, like, any judgment or consequence, um, then I feel like that might be the best way to really... Um, you know, kind of navigate this with the kids um, as opposed to, you know, I, I don't know. I just don't really know. Uh, you know, I just feel very, like, unaware. Like, I feel like aware enough, but not completely aware. Um, it, like, it just has to be, like, a case-by-case -case situation. I don't know if any of this is making sense. Um, I guess, like, ultimately, I, I don't think that I have, like, the bandwidth to, like, be super well informed about everything going on in technology. Uh, I feel like I'm kind of like this outside observer kind of thing. Like I dabble in it, um, but not nearly as much as some of the experts out there. Um, but I like to at least be like conscious and aware that like it exists and, um, you know, use critical thinking to like determine is this situation good or bad? Um, because I feel like there's like a lot of room for good in technology. Um, but I also feel like there's a lot of, like, I I'm just, like, kind of, like, wondering, is it going to be, like, out of control? Like, are we going to develop a dependence on technology to a point where, like, we are, um, you know, if it, we have, like, another pandemic kind of thing like COVID, but it's, like, you know, we can no longer use the internet for, like, a couple of years, like, will we be able to operate? Like, if the internet just kind of gets, like, hacked or shut down or something like that to a point where, like, it's not safe to use at all and nobody knows of a solution, like, can we still operate as a society? And uh, it's very, like, interesting kind of, like, social problem to think about. Um, like, an over-dependence on technology, it will it lead to, like, a breaking point? Um, like, we're kind of striving to use technology to reach this sort of utopia where like all our lives are like uh, benefited but like if we get to this point where we're just like not able to like comprehend the like scope of it all will it ultimately lead, lead to like a dystopia and um i don't know like this is definitely like a philosophical thought um problem i don't really know i'm just kind of like mind vomiting um as i kind of usually do uh but yeah like overall i just feel like the more i kind of learn the more i realize i don't really know anything um and while it's humbling it's also like making me think 
man, I'm getting old. It's making me think like, you know, this is, uh, it's a lot to kind of digest. And, um, you know, just thinking about like, there's people who are alive today that lived through the Great Depression and World War II. And just like, I'm sure like, it was a much different time back then. Like I, it, it was a much different time back then. And just seeing everything evolve over the, you know, past 90 years, um, just seeing like what I'll kind of live through over the next, maybe just like 50 years, how much will continue to increase. Cause like on a daily day to day basis, it doesn't really seem like much, but like when I look back over the past five years, it's like, wow, that, you know, things have changed a lot and I'm kind of just learning about them and then thinking about like what it was like when I was in high school and it's like, wow, yeah, things have changed a lot. And then like thinking about when I was born, it's like, wow, yeah, like a lot has changed. So just, I guess, thinking about um, what will happen is uh, it's going to be interesting. Um, it's a little scary, but also a little, um, you know, exciting at the same time. Um, because I, I, I feel like what kind of gives me peace in it is that um, whether or not we like kind of are in a good situation or a bad situation, uh, we're all kind of going through it together in a way, like in COVID, uh, while it was like really like sucky, um, we could at least like kind of talk about it with like people around us. Uh, we didn't really always understand it, but like there was like kind of this like innate kind of feeling when you talk about it. And, um, so I guess we'll see what happens. Um, it will be interesting. Uh, sorry if this made no sense at all. Uh, but yeah, hope you have a good day. Uh, later days.